Story timers. Hello, it's me Gita here again at the Barkman Branch Library and I have come today to read you some stories about dinosaurs. Could you guess I've got some dinosaur friends here with me? We're all going to read together about dinosaurs. So we're gonna hear a lot of roaring today so get your roars ready there at home. So our first book is going to be Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug. See, the thing with T-Rexes is their arms are very tiny, so they have a hard time hugging people. But this dinosaur figures out how to go about that and figure out how to give hugs with his tiny arms. And this is by Jonathan Stutzman and illustrated by Jay Fleck. So let's get started. Hello, Pointy. Are you okay? No, today I feel sad. I do not want to play. Here's our little T-Rex. He's got very tiny arms, and he might want to give him a hug. So let's see how he does that. He's got a list here that says, how to make a friend feel better. Cake, smiles, hugs, and hugs is circled, very important. Tacos and jokes. That's a very good list. Those things make me feel happy. I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Look at those tiny little arms there. Oh, he's waving them around. Look, look at my arms, they're very small. Each day I'm growing taller, but my arms are still tiny. He's on this big stack of books. Hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me, but I will try anyway. Pointy needs me. So there he is. He is going to try his best to give Pointy a hug so Pointy feels better. Where is my father? I will ask him for advice. Hello, father. You can see how tiny he is there up on dad's head. Very small. That's okay. He's growing every day. We all are. Rexes are thinkers, not huggers. Perhaps instead of hugs, Mathematics might be the answer to your problem. Pointy does not like math. Math will only make Pointy feel worse. There's Dad giving a math lesson. And Pointy will feel worse if he has to be told math. I don't like math that much, so I probably feel worse too. Maybe you guys like math though, and maybe that would be on your list of things that would make you feel good when you are sad is math. And that's okay. Hello, Auntie Junip. I have a problem. I must learn how to hug, but my arms are too tiny. I have found that balance is the key to every problem. Balance and freshly squeezed cucumber juice. That is disgusting. I will ask my mother for help instead. He does not like cucumber juice. And maybe cucumber juice is on your list of things that might make you feel better if you're sad? And if so, that's okay. I have fallen and now I am lost. I do not think I will find my mother in here. He has fallen. It looks like he's in a drawer, guys. Hello, mother. Ah, oh, there he is. He can get out after all. That's good. And he'll ask his mom for some advice here too. It's okay if you can't hug Tiny. You are good at many other things. You are kind and creative and braver than most. You are tiny, but your heart is big. I cannot hug with my heart, mother. I must learn how to hug with my arms. There he is with his tiny little arms. Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Please help me. Hugging is very difficult. We'd love to help Tiny. So there he is. And there's his sister and brother. And they are playing ping pong. They can play ping pong with their tiny arms. They can do a whole bunch of stuff with their tiny arms. To, the, to do the impossible, you must plan and practice, practice, practice. Thank you, Trixie and Rory. That is good advice. So here he is practicing. And now he has hit the ball, the ping pong ball, because he practiced a lot. And he planned how best to approach what he needs to do. I will plan my strategy. So he's got all kinds of strategies. He's thinking he can shoot himself out of a cannonball maybe, or a slide, or a ramp. He's thinking maybe he can have another dinosaur drop him on Pointy's head 
maybe a balloon he could fly in, maybe he could crawl underneath Pointy, burrow into the ground like a mole, and surprise hug him. We'll see which plan works best. I will get stronger. I will practice very hard. I will practice my hugs on everything. So there he is practicing, and we're doing some practice hugs here, except he's hugged this ice cream cone. What do you guys think would happen if you hugged an ice cream cone? That would be pretty sticky and pretty cold. It looks like he is not very happy at all. But he practiced, so he got some good practice out of that hug. I will not practice on that anymore. He sees a really good thing he could practice on, and then he is all covered in pokies. That is probably not a good thing to practice on, a pointy cactus. I am almost ready. I will practice one more time. When I am done, I will find my friend. This tree is very big, like pointy. I will hug it. That's a pretty big tree there. I'm just gonna give it a practice hug. What color is this tree? What color do we have there? It's got some spots on it that are the same color, but what color is it? I think that's purple story timers. A purple tree, have you heard of that before? This is not a tree. I have made a mistake. Please help. From up here, everything looks tiny like me. I could hug anything I wanted. He is up there on this giant big bird flying through the sky. That was not a tree. Oh goodness, now I am falling. I should not have let go. Now I will never find pointy. It's hard to know where you're at if you could fall from a big distance. But look, hello, Pointy. Hello, Tiny. He landed right on Pointy. That's good luck, huh? I am here to make you feel better. I have practiced very hard and hugged many things. My arms are still very tiny and my hugs are still tiny, but I will do my best because you are my very best friend. There is him with his best friend. I will give you the tiniest hug, and it's still going to be cool because it's a hug. Thank you, Tiny. Look, that's a good hug. Very sweet. A tiny hug, but a good one. That was the biggest hug ever. And off they go into the sunset. The end. So that was a wonderful story about hugs learning how to hug, practice and planning gets you somewhere you never expect. All right, next is Dinosaur versus the Library by Bob Shea. We love reading this in story time because we can practice our roars together. Can we practice one right now? On the count of three, one, two, three, roar! I'm a dinosaur. We all be dinosaurs for this book. Just for this book, we can pretend we're dinosaurs. Roar! I'm roaring to the library. Roar, roar, roar. Come roar with me. Roar, 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 roar. Dinosaur versus. He's headed to the library. Roaring along. A cow. What kind of a sound does a cow make without looking here? Can we guess? I think cows go. Moo. They don't quite go roar, but this one goes moo, moo, moo. Roar, roar. Roar, roar, roar. Dinosaur wins. And he has taught this cow how to roar instead of moo. Dinosaur versus, who will he come across next? Baby chicks. What kind of noises do they make? Maybe we can't see here. What kind of noises do little baby chips or little baby chicks make? Not chips, those are the tasty kind. These are the ones that go peep, 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 peep. We can hear him making all kinds of baby chick noises. And he comes in and says, roar. Is he gonna teach them how to roar? Dinosaur wins, roar, 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 roar. And they are making dinosaur noises, he wins. He's taught them how to make Roaring noises. Dinosaur versus a shy turtle. What kind of a noise does a turtle make? It says here he goes, Roar! 
All the chick friends are there too, roaring. Dinosaur wins again, because there goes the shy turtle. He's going, roar, roar. That's a lot of roaring. Dinosaur versus, what next? A sad owl. Roar, 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 roar. Oh, how do you think that owl feels? I think he feels pretty, pretty scared maybe or startled. He looks very startled. Roar, roar, roar. Dinosaur wins. Roar, roar, roar. Now dinosaur will roar where he has never roared before. Do we remember where he was going in the beginning of the book? He was roaring on the way to the library. There we go. And it says story time there on the door, just like we're doing now. Roar, roar, roar. No, dinosaur, use your inside roar. Can we practice our inside roars together? Maybe it would go something like this very quiet. Roar, roar. Something pretty quiet like that would be good for inside the library. Roar, 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 roar. Cat says, what does this cat say? <gasps> says, meow. But he's using his inside meow, so it's probably more like meow. Time for story time. Roar, roar, roar. But wait, can he do it? Roar, meow. Can Dinosaur not roar for an entire story? He's got all his friends here. The chick is here. The sad owl is now happy, and he is here. The shy turtle. And we got the cow here, too. He taught them all how to roar, but can he not roar? The library wins. Okay, they both win. And then he is enjoying new socks, which is also another great book. And we are finished, story timers. Those were two stories about dinosaurs. And now for this week's craft, we have a make your own dinosaur. That guy's a little twisty up here, but he's got a googly eye. And our packs come with everything you need. You'll just color your paper plate, color his tail, his different spikes up here. If you'd like them, you could leave the spikes off and color his head. Those are all pieces included. And cover his clothes pin feet in whatever color you would like. And those are all included. And we also have a cool sensory activity included with that pack. And it'll show you how to make something fun at home, fun and dinosaur related. It's definitely a thing. Um, so join me next week at the same time. That's 1030 on Friday. And next Friday, we will learn about shapes and we will be able to make a shape pizza, your very own take home shape pizza. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day. And continue roaring, maybe very quietly inside the store. Roar, roar, roar. Very quiet. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Goodbye.